So I have a little free time this morning. I was going to walk to church, but it's raining so much, so I think I'm going to skip it out today. But I figured I might as well put it to a little bit of use by writing some modules for my status bar. Now, I'm going to do that, but that's going to involve, well, let me tell you what the modules I want are going to be. I want to have a memory module uh, that shows me the used memory on my computer as a proportion of the whole memory. And I want to be able to click on that, and I want it to show me the 10 most memory intensive processes. And then on the other side, I also want a CPU module that shows CPU temperature. And if I click on that, it shows me the most intensive CPU processes. So that's my goal in this video. But um, even if you don't have a status bar, um, or you know you can still follow along because I actually want to go through the different commands to produce this kind of output. How do you actually find memory, you know, most intensive processes and stuff like that? It's relatively simple. Some of you might already know, uh, but we can go through it. So again, here's my wish list. I want to show uh, all of the memory, like a proportion of the used memory and total memory on my computer. I want to show CPU temperature, one command to generate CPU temperature, and I want to be able to show the most the 10 most memory intensive or CPU intensive processes. And that's what I want. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna find four commands for those four different things. And then I'm gonna create a status bar module, uh, which is gonna be specific to, I, to I3 blocks, but it'll be similar if you have some other kind of status bar. Because, but I3 blocks is the one I'm using. So let's go ahead and start out. Now the first one I'll do is this show memory used over total okay so i want if i have eight gigs of ram i want it to show you know maybe i'm using 200 megs over eight gigs that's what i want the output to look like now in order to do that it's rel this is actually uh relatively simple um you can really just use the free command now if you run free this will actually show you your memory used of course you can see it's not in human readable format but it's relatively easy to get it that way we can just do free with the option of H. And you'll see that we pretty much already have what we want here. Uh, we have our total memory here and our used memory here. These these can be relevant as well, but I'm just gonna take the used memory and total memory as well, um, and that's it. So in order to get this in the format we want, if we want it to be used slash total, we really just need an awk command to do this. So I'm gonna pipe this output into awk. Now the first thing, I really only want this line, so I'm going to say to awk, only give me the line that starts with mem. That's all I want. But I what I want you to do with that is I want you to print it out in the following format. So this thing here is the third element, so I'm going to say first print out the third element, then give me a slash, and then give me the second element, which is going to be uh, this thing here, of course. Close that uh, print command, close that awk. And that produces the exact output we want. So whenever I run this command, it's going to show me used memory out of total memory. Of course, we can run it a couple times. It's not really changing that much because my memory amount is pretty much the same. But we can take this command. Actually, I'll, I'll copy this out. And I'm going to put it over here in our wish list because that's we already have one of the commands we want. Okay, So I'm going to keep that, and I'll make my status bar with it later. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to do CPU temperature. So how do I get CPU temperature? Now, this actually requires a program. Well, you probably already have it. It's um, uh, LM sensors, I think. Uh, if I just run that. Yeah, so this is already installed on my computer. It's probably actually installed on your computer because it's pulled as a dependency for a lot of things. But LM sensors gives you yet another very simple command, just sensors. Yeah, so if I run that, uh, oops, if I run that, you'll see that it, it gives me basically whatever temperature module or temperature uh, monitors there are on your machine, it shows you what values they have. So you'll see right here, here is our, our basically our temperature that we're looking for. Um, it's 63 degrees Celsius. So we can get that out. We can awk this out in the same way. Now you can check the options of sensors if you want. Uh, I mean, if you really insist in your, you know, your CPU temperature being in Fahrenheit, for example, you can give the F option. But I, I feel like even Americans refer to CPU temperature in, in Celsius. That's just how it is. But anyway, so we can do the same thing with this we did with the last option. We can just pipe it in the awk. And we only want the line that says CPU or temperature one, or that starts with that. So we can go uh, temp one, that's what we're looking for, and find that line and print out the second element. Because, well, the, this is the first one, this is the second one. Nice and simple, close that off, and there is our 
our degrees Celsius. That's all we need. One again, one another little simple command. I'm going to copy this out and I'm going to put it in here. So now we have our CPU temperature command. And the last two things are maybe a little more difficult. Now I don't want to say more difficult, but they involve slightly more complicated of a command, and that is show the most memory intensive processes and show the most CPU intensive processes. Um, now these are gonna be similar commands as we'll see. Um, now the program we're gonna use for this uh, is PS. So if you don't know what PS is, um, it's really just a, a, a command that shows you the kind of processes you have and different information about them. And it can show how much memory one is using or how much CPU usage it has or something like that. Now PS, I encourage you to look at the manual because there's a lot you can do with this command just because it has so many options. Now I'm gonna give PS a couple options. I was sort of racking my brain as for which ones I should best give to it before I turn this video on. But the ones I've decided on are A, X, and C. Now AX, let me just run PSAX. You'll usually see people running this and this will, in effect, I mean, you can check the documentation on the A option and the X option yourself. It really has to do with, you know, what's a user process with the case of, of, of A, or not not really user, pro well, just read, read the manual. I don't, it's not important what they do here. Um, but PSAX is gonna basically print out what we think of as being processes, you know, so you have bash, um, you have ST, you have different stuff going on here. You even have, um, well, I'll show that in a second. So you have the different process of processes. I also want to give it the C option. And what C does is, well, maybe I should compare them. So if you don't give the C option, it's going to give some full paths to some things like user bin pulse audio. But if I just give C, it's just going to show pulse audio. So that's a little more intuitive. I want the user interface to be cleaner. I don't want all that junk. And I'm also going to give it the H option. I'm going to give it the H option, which will get rid of the header at the very top because we're going to be using, we're going to be messing around with this kind of stuff. Now the next thing I want to do, so my goal here, this prints out a bunch of information, but I, I want it specifically, let, let's do the memory first. We want it specifically to show us how much memory is used by a process. Now what we can do here, let me make this just a little bigger. Um, you can give it the O option or whatever, and then set some kind of specific output. So the output that I want is I'm going to say command and then percent mem. And this pretty much does exactly what you expect. It's going to list out the command and the percentage of memory used. So now we have all of these commands and we have them sorted by, or not sorted, but you have the memory percentage uh, or memory percent of each one of them. You can also give PS options like sort. So I can say specifically, I want you to sort this and I want you to sort this by percentage of memory. So now we have all of these. You'll notice that the biggest ones are at the very bottom. FFmpeg is the most intensive process running. That of course is recording this video. Then MPV, that's uh, the thing that's generating my head right here. But you know, that's what we expect. Um, but I actually, actually now that I think about it, we really want minus memory because we want the most intensive process th processes to be at the top. Right, so if, uh, well, maybe I should rerun that. So if I go up here to the very top, you'll see that that's where they are. Because this allows us to, let's say, uh, pipe it into to head or something like that. I know we talked about using said 11Q in the last video, but we'll just do something normal and use head. Um, so if you pipe this in the head, you'll actually get uh, what in effect is our 10 most memory intensive processes sorted with the memory percentage. But I want to change this command a little more. First off, if I, you know, again, as I said, I want my module to print out these, um, I want it to print out these val these values if I click on them, but I don't, I don't like this, these big spaces here. So luckily we can, in this uh, output format, we can actually specifically say, I want the command to only be 15 pixels or 15 pixels, uh, 15 spaces or wh whatever it is. Um, the, what's the word for it? Totally, yeah, definitely not 15 pixels. But anyway, so if I give it a 15 here, it's only gonna have you know a width of 15 characters um, and that's gonna be it. So th th that's sort of like what I want here. Uh, so I'm gonna take this command. I don't think there's anything else I need in this. But I'm gonna copy it over again to this little document where I'm keeping all of these commands. And actually the CPU temperature um, is going to be pretty much the same thing. We can actually take all of this, but I'm gonna replace memory 
with CPU and PS will give us the exact same stuff. So now we're looking at the most, oh, well, look at this, <laughs> FFmpeg. That, that's how how much uh, memory, or not memory, how intensive, um, you know, some kind of process like this can be. So you can sort, you know, by CPU percentage. And now we have that. Uh, so I'm gonna take this command, copy it. I'm gonna take it over here. So now we have all the commands we really want. Uh, oops, did not copy all of this. So now we have all of the commands that we want, and um, we can go ahead and start building our i3 blocks modules. Now let me close out of this. So we have all these. I'm going to make this normal. Now I'm going to pull up. So I have this other window in on my other workspace, and this is the general format of an i3 blocks module. Now this is. I'm going to start out. I think I've named this file i3 mem because this is going to be the memory module. Now by default I want it to just print out the percentage of memory or the the ratio of memory used. So I'm going to put in this command that says uh, you know that prints out the used memory over the total memory. Now I'm going to go to my i3 blocks config which is in i3 blocks config and I'm going to set let's say a new module for memory that's what I'm going to name it. The command I'm going to run is this script here, which is i3mem. So i3mem. And it's already my path directory, so I don't have to worry about that. The interval, let's say I want it every 30 seconds. And it, you can also give it a label. That's going to be like a decorative uh, you know, logo or something. I'm going to choose a brain because it's about memory. So I'm going to put this in, I'm going to save both of these documents, and I'm going to restart i3 blocks, and you'll see up here I, ha I now have a brain icon, and it has the used memory over the total memory, and that's pretty much exactly what I want. Now additionally, as I said, I want to be able to click on this, um, and for it to show the, um, what was I about to say, the, the most intensive processes. Now I actually already have this case statement uh, up here, I'm going to uncomment all this. Now in i3 blocks, again, this is going to be i3 blocks specific, but in i3 blocks, when you have a script that you're running as your, um, you know, your, your the, the script for your module or whatever, um, when you click on it, it automatically gives it a block button uh, variable. You'll see I just clicked on it and it printed out left click action because when I clicked on that, it set block button equal to one and then it ran this command here. So what we wanted to do is I wanted to print out, I'm going to have it print out a pop-up that has the most intensive processes on it. So I'm going to get rid of this. Now I'm going to be using notify send, um, let me just as an example. So notify send is the little command that prints out some kind of notification just to show you that this thing works. If I click on this, you'll see that I, ha I printed out this text right here, but I wanted to print out uh, this little command. So I'm going to take this command, most intensive memory, or oops, most intensive memory um, processes. So I'm going to have it print that. I should probably make it uh, put it all on a line so it's pretty. I think that this should just work. Let's see. Okay, yeah, great. So that prints out all of our processes and it shows the percentage of memory usage of each. That's exactly what we want. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at this. I might add in some other things in a second just to make it uh, a little more specific what we're looking at. You could say, for example, uh, let's say, uh, you know, most uh, memory, well, we'll say biggest memory hogs. That on a new line, so print out, print that out, and it'll print. Uh, oops, should probably, I guess, put in another. Oh no, I'm tab it over. That's what it is because it's sensitive to white space. Um, yeah, so that prints that out. So that's pretty much what what we want. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll I'll put some. This is going to be on my GitHub, but I'll probably add some other stuff in before I actually push it. But pretty much the same thing would be. Uh, let's make our CPU module. So I'm going to open up. Actually, maybe. I'm not quite sure what directory I'm in. I'm gonna to go to uh, my status bar, I'm gonna create i3 CPU. And that's gonna be my new script. Um, then I am going to copy and paste pretty much everything from here into this uh, script. I'm gonna make 
make it executable. Probably should have done this before the video is on. You'll notice that I'm craning my head. That's because I have my microphone in the way. I don't know why I just don't move that. Um, anyway, I should probably edit that out, but I'm too lazy. Okay, so now that we have all that, we can make a CPU module. I'm gonna set that up in i3 blocks. Command, i3 CPU interval. Let's say I want that maybe every 15 seconds. And the label I'm gonna give it, maybe I'll give it some kind of, I don't know, computer, uh, I don't know, laptop computer. It doesn't really matter. I'll put that in. And if I, let's see if I run this. Yeah, so that'll pop up. Now we just have to change the commands to the things we want. So our CPU temperature is this command. So I'm gonna go in here and replace uh, the memory command with that. So now it will show CPU, oops. It'll show CPU, so 61 degrees Celsius. And now I will take, instead of that memory command, actually I don't need to paste it, I can just replace mem with CPU and that will give us our most intensive CPU processes. So and I will biggest CPU pods. So now I'll redo that or reload i3 blocks and if I click on this it'll show me biggest CPU hogs. Again FFmpeg just steals the day. Look at all that. Uh, but uh, yeah so that's pretty much all we want I guess. So anyway uh, so this has been sort of I guess just a real life implementation of something. I'm gonna toy around with these scripts a little more maybe add some uh, bells and whistles. Usually what I do is I, if you like right click on a module, I want it to show some information about it. So I'll probably add those as well. You can just put them in this block, uh, actually just undo this and that'll be your right click action. Um, so anyway, you can check these out on my GitHub. Uh, if you have any questions, recommendations, ask or put them in the comments or something like that. But anyway, that's going to be pretty much it and I'll see you guys next time.